Good afternoon, listeners. Welcome from the CRMOT Centre Community Stadium at the Lamb for this Central League Southern Premier Division clash between Tamworth and Lower Stoft Town. A fantastic afternoon in store, fantastic spring weather. Commentary this afternoon will be brought to you by myself, Kev Clark, and alongside me is Stuart Bywater. Good afternoon, everyone, for this lovely afternoon here, Kev. Well, the scene is set here at the CRMOT Centre Community Stadium at the Lamb. The shed are in fine voice, the sun is out, and what promises to be, hopefully, a very good game of football. We are underway. It's Lowestoft that kick us off, and they're kicking from our left to our right. Tom was therefore kicking towards the Meadow Street end, which means the sun is in the eyes of goalkeeper Elvis Footnins. And it's something of a ploy for Tamworth here, Stuart, at, uh, at home, isn't it, to kick that way if we get the choice? Yeah, we always seem to, to go that way and we can't use the fact that the pitch isn't flat anymore. And we used to weather the storm of trying to oh, kick and pin. caught late there. Sorry to interrupt you, Stuart. Yeah, Concannon's caught just over the halfway line there. I think it was by Rio Douglas actually, but and it's all getting a little bit heated already in the very early seconds within the first minute of this game. And the referee has got his work cut out here, Mr. John Kenny, just to calm things down a little. He's having a word with a couple of players now. But that was a, a nasty tackle on Jack Concannon. He's no stranger to those sort of tackles, is he, Stuart? No, and I think a lot of the time it's his pace that catches players out, isn't it? And unfortunately for Tamworth. Joe McGund has been booked for his descent, but also Andrew Fisk for the challenge has also found himself in the book as well. So two yellow cards in the opening minute of this one, Kev. And let's just hope that this isn't a sign of things to come. Situated. It's immediately gone out of play for a, another throw for Tamworth. Clement chips on forward, looking over his shoulder. He knew where Tyrell Waite would be and he found him out on his left touch line. Drives into the 18-yard box now, Waite. Chips it in towards the middle of the goal, towards Clement, but it uh, was importantly headed out before it could reach the midfielder. And Lowestoft survived. That's the first time really Tamworth has switched the play quick enough to cause Lowestoft problems. Here's Green now, just strides over halfway. Short ball into Concannon, who's tackled but shows great footwork through to Diaz tries to go around the goalkeeper and does really well to get something on that and deflects it out for a corner He's slotted in very well and here he is it again just covering has. that back line in that Ryan Bezik uh, role yeah, it's, it's, at the minute I mean I know we're only 14 minutes into this one but it's enough one of them comfortable performances where you you know you just sort of merge in and nothing stands out but that's a good thing because nothing's glaringly obvious that you've done anything wrong in fairness as well but that's what Ryan Bezik does he goes yeah. does so much unnoticed work there there's a corner to Lowestoft on this near side at the castle end swung towards the back post it's a good header and it's the opening goal for the trawler boys a well worked corner to the back post and it was really an uncontested header Jazz Singh got something on it but he couldn't keep it out Oh yeah, Jazz Singh looked like he was going to try and come and claim it and then sort of backtracked and then he was off his line and the goal was unguarded. Sam was in possession in and around the halfway. Diaz to Green, into Concanon. Initial pass was blocked but he gets a second bite at the cherry. Loops up into the 18-yard box. Janai Gordon's making a nuisance of himself. Almost fell to Tyrell Waite there at the far post but not quite. Tamworth recycle now. Clement chips one in. Diaz is there. He can only head it over the bar. But I think if Diaz could have eyes in the back of his head, he might well have left that for Christian Green Stewart. Yeah, it was. It just wasn't aware that he was there, was he? But Christian Green was in a far better position to, to head that one home. Throwing on the far side. Deep throw into the Lambs box, headed up by Kettle. Falls to Tyrell Waite to try and complete the clearance now. Lays it back to Spencer doesn't quite get the connection on it clears it up towards halfway but it's coming back on Tamworth as quick as they can clear it 
but with balls like that into the Tamworth box, there's no danger. And another stuff out into their score. Pulled out by Kettle, infield to Stabana. He feels, feeds King Cannon. Oh, he almost gets onto the end of that one. He was barged off the ball, but it was really good strength there. Didn't meet a Tamworth head. It's uh, eventually the attack by Lowestoft is broken up, and here comes Jack King Cannon now. He finds Christian Green on the far side. Chance for Tamworth to come over halfway. Green just waits for the for the tackle, then sidesteps it. Tyrell Waite just doesn't quite take the ball with him and suddenly Lowestoft are on the front foot. Ball towards Jake Reed. Jassing does well enough initially, but he spilled the ball. Reed now to make it two. Fantastic clearance on the line. And it was Joe Magunda that spared Jassing's blushes there and manages to block that out for a corner. There's some discussion here because I think they're saying it was handball, Kev. And I think potentially Lowe's have been given a penalty and it does appear that way. And there's a red card. Red card. For Magunda. I didn't see that at all. No. The referee went to confer with his linesman as well. Hopefully Joe Magunda was already on a yellow card, but if it was handball to stop a goal scoring opportunity, it would have been a straight red either way. Well, well, well. Tamworth down to 10 men. Joe Magunda sent off for blocking the ball on the goal line with what appeared to be a good block, but it was a, a, a judge to have been a handball after Jazz Singh had spilt the ball over the head of Jake Reed. So lowest off with a penalty to make it 2-0. Oh, saves it! Palms it away for a corner! And that could be an absolute lifeline for the Lambs. That was a superb save there by Jazz Singh. That ball was heading for the corner of the goal and he was outstretched. Fingertip save to push it out for a corner. Midway into the Tamworth half and it will be Jack Wilkinson again. This time it is too far out for a shot and he's setting this one up for a curler towards the far post, I believe. It's exactly where it goes, far into the six yard box. Lowest off head on it, but it's out for a goal kick. And there is the half-time whistle. I'm sure Andy Dalishan and Gary Smith will be more than happy to get the troops into the dressing room at half-time because that was arguably the poorest performance by a Tamworth side under their reign so far. We've come in recent games, but yeah, my point is that they, they really didn't have a lot to feed off. No, they didn't. As the second half gets underway at eight minutes past four, and he'll, of course, just take his time now. And why wouldn't he? His team are 1 0 to the good. Kicks from hand from the 18 yard line. Skips right through midfield, actually. And Tamworth are on the back foot. They've got a man over. Williams hits a drive off the, po off the crossbar. Not cleared yet by Tamworth. Well, he had Bamant out to his left hand side there. He elected to ignore him and hit the drive himself from about 16 yards. And it crashed off the bar. Luckily for Tamworth, it remains just 1-0. No, it was very dicey once again, Kev, from the Tamworth back four. I think we have to accept to a degree that these gaps will open up in the Lambs' back line this half, though. Of course, down to 10 men. Trying to make a game of it and push men forward. There will be, at times situations like that. Corey does well to get the ball over to his opposite fullback, Wilkinson now. Left hand side of the pitch, down by the sponsor suite to Douglas. Got Kettle for company who marshals him well. Diaz in field to Clement who takes on his man and strides over halfway now. Tries to pick out a pass to Janai Gordon but it was well intercepted by Andrew Fisk. And immediately Lowestoft are on the front foot. An open goal for Jake Reed after a long ball. He beat Jazz Singh to the ball. He's headed it into the unguarded net. It's Tamworth nil. Lowestoft town two. Well, second goal and it's now going to be a, an absolute Jake mountain Reed. to climb for Tamworth to get anything out of this game at all. But Tamworth immediately back in possession, although in their own half. 
neat skill again by Jack Concannon there. Kept position well for Tamworth and Jenai Gordon's got three in the 18 yard box now. Now here's a chance, shot at first goal! He did all the hard work and it whistles wide at the far post. look forward to next season really Stuart with the potential of here comes Jake Reed. good save by Singh worked his way into the box really well there for lower stuff so it's not fully clear yet it's Williams with a low drive but it's a couple of yards wide of Jazz Singh's right hand upright and a goal kick to Tamworth yeah in fairness that shot was straight at Jazz Singh he still had to be alert gonna end up with the three points going back to the coast yeah, and that's three wins in the last six for the Trawler boys and they're pulling clear of that relegation zone. There it is, final whistle. A very poor performance really, all told from a Tamworth perspective. Well, I guess really we just need to re go and regroup to it and um, I look ahead to the long trip really to Royston Town next Saturday.